Just because she's the toughest cop in Brooklyn doesn't mean she can't have fun too. I'm not angry. I think it's funny. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Rosa Diaz was the best character on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. For this list, we're looking at Diaz's most iconic moments with the Nine-Nine, whether they were hilarious or inspiring. We're basing our picks on a mix of character growth, comedy, and how well each scene's played on our knowledge of Rosa as a person. Rosa, I should listen to you. Yeah. Everyone should listen to me all the time about everything. This list covers multiple seasons of the show, so a spoiler alert is in order. Then prove it. Number 10. Badass, not an anarchist. Rosa isn't particularly warm to most people, but she'll stand by her principles no matter who's involved. This becomes glaringly clear when Diaz tries to use a family dinner to get out of a weekend shift. Santiago, Diaz, before you go. Both of you requested to have this Saturday off, but I need one of you to work. Oh, I can take that shift. Well, the last time you worked a Saturday, you watched cartoons the entire time. Well, that's when they're on. Work this out and get back to me. Rosa's track record catches up with her as Amy calls out how often she hates on her parents in front of her coworkers. Well, I have plans on Saturday too. I'm having dinner with my parents. So? You don't even like your parents. You call them smiley morons and hug freak. It's Diaz's blunt reply, however, that shows how committed she is to standing by her word, even when it involves people she doesn't like. Plans are plans. I'm a badass, not an anarchist. Couple that with some shade towards anarchists, and this exchange gets audiences laughing at sides of Rosa we didn't know we needed. Number 9. Real Stuff after Amy bumps into Teddy during a police training session, Rosa tries to decipher who he is. Once she remembers Teddy is actually Amy's ex, Diaz hilariously distilled him down to what amounts to allegedly awful qualities. Right, that's the guy you said the lame stuff about, like he's a good listener. However, it's the seemingly positive things she describes about him that comically reveals just how macho Rosa truly is. Whoops, sorry. Net gun. My Capicolici! Though Amy tries to fire back at such a bizarre complaint, Diaz just doubles down by explaining she's more interested in physique than thoughtfulness. I'm sorry, what do you look for in a guy? I don't know, real stuff. Shape of his ass. It's this utterly instinctual definition of real stuff that helps establish just how unique Rosa is from her colleagues. Number 8. Jimmy Jab Misogyny for an office competition, Rosa uses a disguise to fool as many coworkers as possible. However, Diaz's zero-tolerance policy for misogyny immediately backfired on her when her ditzy character was called a demeaning nickname. Peralta, what the hell? Where were you? I got eliminated. Excuse me, officer. Yeah, sweetheart. Sweetheart? Seriously, Hank, is that how you talk to women who come in here? Jimmy Jab. While her outrage was understandable, it was her inability to fight her instincts that had us laughing at the gaffe. Her reaction wasn't a total surprise, however, given how aggressively she's reacted to touching in the precinct. Making coffee? Can you make another cup for Senor Tickle and his nueve amigos? Tickle, tickle, tickle. What the hell, Hitchcock? No! Ow, 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 ow. In fact, Rosa made it clear early in the series that she'd stand behind her female coworkers, even if she was upset with them. So though it was funny to see Diaz fall apart, it was a perfect representation of how strongly she defends women in the police force. Well, you're not the only girl at the table anymore. We work in a police force full of dudes. We gotta have each other's backs, okay? You saying you have my back? Yeah, I got your back. Don't smile, I'm still mad at you. I thought we were having a moment. Moment's over, shut up. Number seven, cold meds. I'm gonna rip your head off. I'm gonna rip your damn head off, Grandma. Rosa is such a tough cookie to crack that she tries to beat a cold by outright refusing its existence. A hearty swig of medication, however, makes her intensely loopy and unusually hyper compared to her otherwise low-key demeanor. It's hard not to giggle at how atypical she's acting, especially when she tries to empower Hitchcock over his name. Uh, I'm Michael. That's a dumb name, but it's yours, and you should be proud of it because you are the greatest detective I've ever known. Diaz only shocks us more when she answers the phone completely deadpan, too. Oh! Why doesn't someone answer that phone? Get it, I will get it. Hello? No, there's no Michael here. You have the wrong number. Goodbye. Further showing audiences that she's out of her drugged state, Rosa absurdly breaks a window just to get back to work. Considering she also plays off a smile as a result of her cold, Diaz's illness only reminds audiences of all the things she isn't. Thank you for all your help. Wait, is that a smile I see? 
possibly. My immune system is too weak to fight off my small muscles. Number six, I'll sign your report. As Rosa and Detective Pimento start flirting with each other, they used a simple bit of paperwork to be suggestive. I need you to sign this report. Okay, I'll sign your report. The tension between them was already hilariously unbearable in this scene, but we were in stitches at her seductive ink talk. Careful, the ink's still wet. This was also a rare moment to see Rosa flex both her masculine and feminine sides simultaneously, as she ogled Pimento before nearly stabbing him with a pen. Okay, they gotta knock that off. Though their sexual air drying was laughably awkward, it was funnier watching them try to outmuscle each other through stapling and hole punching. And the fact that she was so oblivious to everyone around her cleverly reinforced how intense Rosa can be. That was weird. You okay? Yes. Number five, my first police kid. Rosa Diaz is passionate about her police work, so she freaks out when young officer Deepmore nearly messes up her case. While Rosa's behavior borders on bullying, it is hysterical to see her pay back childish mistakes so literally. Hey, Deepmore, if you're gonna bag evidence like a five-year-old, you should have the proper tools. It's in my first police kit. The walkie-talkie blows bubbles. Hope you can handle it. The fact that she greets Deepmore in such a friendly way only accents how angry the rest of her rant was, too. Despite the vicious comments, Diaz's explosion mostly shows us she cares. Plus, her lackluster apologies and long list of consolers gives us a fun peek at the depths of her rage. I'm sorry for making fun of you in front of everybody. And also for making fun of you behind your back. Didn't know you did that, but thank you for the apology. I'm not done. Also, I'm sorry for making fun of you during my book club. Those people don't even know you. That was uncool. Also, I'm sorry I didn't- It's okay. I get it. The arc is one of Rosa's most interesting, thanks to its mix of savage anger and personal growth all in one episode. Also, I'm sorry that I didn't take the time to show you how to fix your mistake. Come on, we can go over it upstairs. Thanks, that'd be great. Oh, one more sorry. You're about to see a drawing I did of you in the elevator. Just remember, I was really pissed at you at the time. Number four, best Thanksgiving ever. Chaos is where Rosa thrives, so she gladly encourages Amy to act out during a Thanksgiving bar stop. I can act out too, you know. Please do. Okay, watch this. Oops. Out. All of you. While the ensuing mayhem gets them thrown out, Diaz is all smiles when they get to the station. Her cheerful outlook on the night reflects Rosa's contrarian nature and shows she cares more about a good story than being comfortable. The fact that she includes a new detail about a rodent swarm also emphasizes her unusual outlook. I think the rats got to her. You think? This is the greatest thing that's ever happened. As an accurate but unexpected summary of their Thanksgiving train wreck, Rose's comments send the episode off with outlandish humor. So you pretty much got the disaster night you were hoping for? Yeah, until you made the best Thanksgiving meal I've ever had and ruined it. Number three, I just tell them where we're going. Though Rosa clearly doesn't date like her coworkers do, Jake seeks her help to woo Amy. Regardless of the relatable issues Jake describes in his romantic dilemma, Diaz doesn't seem to understand in the slightest. I've been thinking about asking her out for the last couple of weeks, but it's hard. There's so much buildup now, you know? Not really. I don't ask people out. I just tell them where we're going. However, this is less indicative of a lack of sympathy and more telling of Rosa's approach to finding partners. So, Adrian, when are we gonna stop messing around and do this thing? Uh... Never. What? Her blunt stand-in for a pickup line is not only comically forward, but also a sign of how bold she is in general. By cutting through so many conventions of dating and leaving Jake in the dust, this moment is Rosa at her comedic best. Get in there and bust up her date. Show her you care. Ruin her night. You really have a unique take on love. Number two, the breakup text. Rosa has a lot of trouble showing love to people, but breaking up with Marcus is stressful enough that she turns to Captain Holt. With her plan to end things over a text hilariously deemed too cold, Diaz is encouraged to be a little more thoughtful. I'm gonna send him a text while he's sleeping that says, we're done. Clear, accurate, but do you feel like it's enough? We're done, goodbye. 
Yes, that you do it. Her initial restraint also calls back to her disdain for open emotions. Why didn't you just tell me? I didn't know stuff was getting that serious. Yeah, it's very embarrassing having feelings. So it's classic Rosa to find Marcus so extra. While her acknowledgement to a tearful response is par for the course, it's brilliant that her and Holt see that as enough. We'll practice. Hmm? I'll be Marcus. Go. <clears throat> Marcus, I think we should break up. That makes me feel sad. I'm sad. Your sadness is noted. I feel acknowledged. Thank you for breaking up with me. Mm. It will take me eight minutes to collect my things. I think that went very well. As an exploration of Diaz's guarded personality and her less glamorous approach to romance, this scene shows us that Rosa can be sloppy too. Before we get to our number one Rosa pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It's a drinking game. Get a question wrong, do a shot. Oh, and the questions, they're all about Rosa. But none of us know anything about Rosa. Everyone's about to get real hammered. What is my favorite soup? Chicken noodle. Potato leek. Corn freaking noodle. Oh, I mean chowder, damn it. You're all wrong, I've never had soup. Don't bother, they all suck. I see the color blue. She sees blue. And yellow. <gasps> and I see the letter L, R, S, T, W, E, and B. So basically everyone's first eight guesses in Hangman? Thank you, Carlene. Your entire life is garbage. Now, just because I'm definitely rich now doesn't mean I'm gonna forget my roots. You all get something, so fire away. Jake, your friendship is gift enough for me. Friendship is crap. I want a Ducati Monster A21. All right, Rosa gets a motorcycle. Why do we have to dress up for Thanksgiving? I don't even celebrate that stuff. The whole holiday is based on overeating. We should be wearing velvet tracksuits and diapers. Jacket and tie. Rosa's even wearing her formal leather jacket. It's the one without any blood on it. Fine. What about this guy? No, he was scared of everything. Do you remember Rosa's reaction last time the printer jammed? I'll pay for that. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, coming out. It took plenty of steps for Rosa to officially announce her bisexuality to everyone in her life, and not all of them went smoothly. Her reveal to the 9-9 was bizarrely businesslike, and in true Rosa fashion, she kept things brief. Something I'd like to say, I'm a pretty private person, so this is kind of hard for me, but here we go. I'm bisexual. All right. I will now field one minute and zero seconds of questions pertaining to this, go. This said, it still resulted in some hysterically awkward pep talks from her coworkers. But you never know when you're gonna find your dream person. Anyone on the street could be that. All right, it feels like you Googled how to talk to your bisexual friends. Her outing to her parents was much messier, however, but Rose's assertive behavior helped make clear she wouldn't compromise her life with them. Well, Jake and I aren't dating, but guess what? Your worst fears are real. I'm not straight, I'm bisexual, and I don't care what you think about it. Screw this, I'm out of here. Both conversations showed off Diaz's ability to open herself up as a bisexual individual, while still maintaining her badass persona. I might get married to a man like you so clearly want, and I might not, because this is not a phase, and I need you to understand that. I'm bisexual. There's no such thing as being bisexual. Yes, there is. I know there is, because that's who I am. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.